All right, so we're going to have a dual after action report sort of comparison video. Um, the Panzer IV 70A um, from Dragon and Tamiya. Now, full disclosure and, and first things first, I 100% finished that one within about three days. It's wonderful. And I'm giving up on this one. I've, mm, I've just had it. So, um, not really sure what order to go through because I want to be sort of fair to both and um, make use of, of, of my time here. So, um, I'm going to start with the Tamiya one because it's, it's a nicer story. And then we'll get into the Dragon one and then whatever. So this is one I think people are more curious about because it's brand new and it's kind of cheap and all that stuff. So, um, overall, it is incredibly fast and um, really well engineered in general. I, I only had like a few complaints. Lower hull and suspension stuff is, you know, simple and aces as you would expect. Now this gets to gripe number one which someone had said in the comments of my um, inbox, and I kind of doubted them, and I apologize for that. And it's been all over the Facebooks as well. Uh, the tracks don't fit. They give you, the, the amount they tell you to use isn't long enough, and then they give you an extra one, which creates that. If you see that gap between the idler and the tracks, you cannot move the idler, so that's as good as it got. And I had that issue on both sides. Now my theory here is that I put the tracks on at the end and maybe if I had like glued the tracks to the wheels and it's possible that they aren't down enough here because there is that little notch up in here to like secure them to there. So maybe it would have fit with the amount they said if I had really tightly pushed it down into the return rollers and whatnots. But doing them more similarly to how I do magic tracks, they didn't fit. The only issue is, is that this is a little bit less taut, but I think that's actually how it was kind of designed to be sort of softer there. Not like direct line from, from sprocket to wheel. And then there's too much slack back here, but it doesn't, it doesn't look terrible when it's sitting there. It's just not ideal. And I was like, well, that's unfortunate. The way the fenders and stuff go on, really simple. All that was that one big piece. Um, and then we pretty quickly get into the superstructure. And I'm gonna ignore the roof for a minute and point out you have these like plugs that help you join the back plate and this plate. And the fit of the, of the superstructure onto the hull itself is just flawless. That's how much gun you get with their um, having an aftermarket thing for their breech assembly, which is silly in my opinion. This stuff is fine. I did drill out the tool handles. I didn't do anything aftermarket. They also don't mention the C-hook. Um, these hooks I screwed up because they come through the back of this plate and I just skipped that step because I was like, this is so easy. And then I got distracted and messed it up and I was still able to recover it and it looks exactly like it would have and it doesn't matter. So that's great. Um, really all we have left there is the roof and the shirts. And now the roof, I have a little bit of issue with. <clears throat> so all of the hatches, well, both of them are double hinged. So it means they pop up like this and they come up like this. So, comes up, flips up. Now the problem is, and I've seen this in other people's pictures as well, that's as vertical as it can get. Like, almost, but it will not stay open. It always falls forward. And really, it should be quite a bit back on the real ones. So you could glue it open, and I, I very well may, but it still won't look right. It doesn't quite open correctly. However, um, you know, the hinges and stuff were easy. This is a little pedestal thing for their guy to sit on. It's all fine, except for one of the biggest problems in the whole kit, which is silly. The sprue gates and these little indents here and here are impossible to remove. And when I did remove them, to the best of my ability, if you look on the back here, there's a little bit of like 
you can tell that there is material removed when I press it down and glue it, it's going to be fine. But it was a really stupid, stupid place to put sprue gates up inside of this half width thing. Like, just put them on the edges like you did on the other sides and it would have been fine. I don't know why they did that. And then also, <clears throat> this uh, hook here engages with this peg here when the scope or the sight is through there and then this whole thing moves which is unnecessary but I guess pretty cool uh, and this thing is also workable uh, I can't really move the gun out of the way enough but this little travel lock down here he does move so that's pretty interesting uh, the only thing I think it really misses detail wise is the conduit for that light which I will probably add depends I got a lot going on all right, then the shirts in. Pretty fantastic. Plastic frames, you just kind of set this PE in there. The PE's a little flat. And then you glue some plastic hooks on and then you CA these plastic sort of, these two guys there. But then it, it stays together pretty well. And it fits on really well. Um, they do, have to overlap to fit on so that's usually a little bit of a to-do but there's that guy here's this guy again the frames were amazingly uh, easy to do so these guys here had a little like notch out and then the railing would snap right into each one perfectly and there were good spots on the hull and the fenders for those supports to fit in so everything was keyed perfectly so overall, uh, it was exactly what I thought it would be. I got me a Panzer IV 70A experience over three days. That was exactly what I wished I had had with said Dragon Kit. Uh, figure's okay. I didn't paint them. He's around here somewhere. Uh, but that's not really a particular interest to me. You can't make this open. And the hatches are goofy. But, you know, overall, still really nice experience. My Dragon Guy. Now this is the later variant with the hull extensions um, and a, a few other minor differences, but I just want to go over like the basic construction differences. So um, the hull was actually kind of a pain because these are standard. Ooh, it's a standard hull, like very much like the vehicle was made is how they made the kit. So it's just a real hull with like individual fenders and it takes a little bit longer to build up. The back pieces are much more complicated. Um, all of this is just more pieces and more complicated. Um, mating the, the superstructure, um, it was warped and there was no, no one had ever gone through and said, well, how can we make sure that this superstructure fits onto this hull? Probably very similar to how the real vehicle was, but it was ridiculous. Um, the hull was warped, the superstructure was warped, uh, the top plate was warped, which caused me to have to glue all of the plates together way earlier than I would have. And there's a, still a gap up here in this corner. And therefore, there's a beautiful breach in here that I can no longer get to. I also can't because I forgot. I didn't get the sight on or the scissor periscope on because I was busy trying to get all the plates to sit down and, and mesh well together. And um, I screwed up in that case. Um, the jack doesn't actually fit. If you can see, the jack clamps are floating. This thing does not work and there's no way to know where to glue it. They tell you, they give you a drawing of where to put these two things. Then you're, you literally just have to glue this down onto those two little stilt things there. It's crazy difficult. Um, and it's not as much of a, like, a description with the Tamiyan one would be like, this is how they chose to have these things work. And with dragons, it's like, this is how they expect you to fix these problems. These have broken off. There's supposed to be four of them. You have these four kind of bars. Wheels sit in there. They broke off. They repeatedly break off of this one. I need to think of a solution. I was using brass, but the wheels wouldn't fit in there. Um, and ev everything feels very afterthoughty on this one. And I'm, I'm not doing a great job describing the build, but I can also tell you that the suspension on this side is crooked. It is not 
straight. I'm not really sure how that happened with the, the Smart Kit uh, Panzer IV series hull. Um, still no conduit. There were just pieces they'd forget to tell you you needed to kind of cut or modify or sand. Yes, this port can open. This later one does have the Sturmgewehr with the 90 degree barrel. This is not the correct hatch because I screwed up. This is a hatch from a different type of Jagdpanzer IV that I just glued that little thing on with the barrel sticking out. So that's just me making a mistake. That's not really a problem with the kit. The gun is beautiful in this thing and I can't show it to you. And then the worst part would be the shirts and then the rails. I know I'm more just rambling about how much I didn't like this one compared to the other one, but... So they have you glue the rail, the rail supports on with good markers here, but kind of sketchy ones here. So these are probably a bit wrong. And unlike the Tamiya one, the Tamiya one had the detail for the outside of these as part of the rail, because technically the, on the real one, it's outer, it's like this with bars, the bars are inside of it. With the Tamiya thing, they broke that into two. This one is, is behaving as it really would. So you had to kind of glue them up in here, but I have no idea. And I'm pretty sure it's not correctly set with its roll. So the, the shirts won't even fit on there. The one that I mostly made, the hooks won't even fit on because you need to have like these little indents. So these are pretty much wrong and it'll look convincing if you don't uh, have shirts in on there, but if it's just, if they're, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm stuck. I didn't do the magic tracks because they're magic tracks. And I did one of these, at least I tried for you, on Sunday. So you've got real mesh, which is better looking, arguably, than Tamiya's kind of grid PE. Like it looks more round and that's kind of what the real ones look like. You need to use a jig to bend these into a V and glue them in there. Then you can CA these hooks and then you also have to CA these things on there, but I couldn't get anything to stick to this mesh. And it's not my CA, I tested it. It's just really hard to glue stuff to and they're all bent that way. And then I also realized, you know, partly in that I couldn't get them to hang on there correctly anyway. So I said, kind of screw it. So what, I, what I'm gonna do is, you know, one of these goes into my little miniature museum. Ain't that one, <laughs> it's this one. And I may just put the Type 7 tracks into my spare magic tracks pile and put this guy in a pile of shame, or I may just throw tracks on him and also paint him just as like a, like a practice piece. I don't know. Um, one thing I will point out, um, this is off temporarily to try to get the site in there, but this is PE on this one, and it's actually quite thick plastic on the Tamiya one. But really, it's telling a story of of elegant sequences and ease of build with this. And this is just like, you ever built a crappy dragon kit? Because that's what this one is. It's like everything's haphazard. The parts that are, are new to the vehicle were nice, but they didn't really mesh with the kit. They weren't designed for the kit. They were just designed and then, you know, you have to kind of make them work on the kit. And a lot of it was, this was the first thing I was messing with coming back in. And I think these shirts and rails I wasn't ready for. But this is just fragility, these broke and you know, it, they look really close in detail level. If you ever want to say like, you know, dragon stuff looks way more detailed than Tamiya, well, there they are next to each other. And it's near as makes no difference to me, except this one had really easy to work with PE Toma shirts in. And I, I felt like I was, you know, it was a treat to build this. I'm like, well, what's the newest Tamiya thing like to build? Like, you know, not like, can I, can I suffer through this and it makes me worried because I, I have a lot of dragon stuff. I even got a new dragon kit in the mail today Panzer IV uh, Smarket series and I'm like good lord um, This just reinforces my Tamiya binge uh, It's lovely. It's a dumb vehicle, but it's a wonderful kit uh, I will paint it as, as soon as I can. I'm still doing the the Panzer IV F over there. Got a base coat on him um, But really I mean uh, Panzermeister 36 my bro he wanted to see a, hear a comparison, and really, he and I both built this, so he knows kind of what that's like, but I'm, I'm having a hard time articulating the comparison because this I remember how it was to build, and this I just suffered through. But I just, I don't see enough detail. And another thing I want to gripe about with these Dragon uh, Panzer IV series is they have the rings for the inside of this idler that I just skipped because they're like six little, you know, pieces of roundish thing, and you have to like 
glue them together. Maybe there's three, like three chunks of a circle, but there's two circles per idler. So then there's you know, three, six, nine, twelve. Just if you give me a, a circle piece of PE, fine. But if you make me make a circle out of three parts of a circle, I'm out. And uh, the Tammy one is didn't have to deal with that. So again, uh, just preaching uh, how great Tammy is. I will say, um, no transparent periscopes. So my usual way of dealing with that is to either poach some, not or not put them in, which is probably what I'll do here. I just, you know, it's a little miniature museum piece while the periscopes aren't in it. But um, remember, no hammer stolen holes in in these tracks, and I didn't put any on. But like, could you could you see the difference? Probably not. But one thing I will bring in real quickly is. Um, so these are Tamiya's current Lincoln length, and I wanted to try them because I thought I was being stupid on my last Panzer IV F, which is here. And while I built these in the day I was having issues with them, I know this is really dark, but the magic tracks I did on here are perfect. So I made the right call replacing these with these, which are just spare magic track type threes. Um, so that was just nice, because you see how you've got the really taut um, track here and here and some sag on top that's what you want and then now here i've got these sort of really rounded tracks and they're pretty good again but they're not perfect and when length and length isn't perfect it can go real wrong and luckily i've got experience and i had time and different types of glues and i made it work but man good old magic tracks just work the first time so yeah but there's my my two tammy guys together you might say that this was somewhat of a of a of a thing of uh, lack of skill, but one thing other thing I wanted to point out for uh, people who have built the dragon ones, the foliage loops are in plastic on here, and they might be a little bit big, but the fact that they they're still there, and I I just chose not to do them on here because they're little PEDs, and I was like nope, D D shapes. Um, but so yeah, the Tamiya gets a you know a nine out of ten for me, and the dragon one gets. A, thrown in the box of shame because it, it it really well could have kept me from coming back to modeling with just how frustrating and the only reason I was able to like get it to where it is is because I was I had a lot of free time like downtime and it was like sitting right in front of me and I would just toy with it and glue you know try to fix the like the patches I screwed up normally I would have just given up on that thing right away so um I apologize for not having a better head-to-head -head comparison. Really, the after action on this is it's terrible and haphazardly thrown together by Dragon, and they deserve their market share loss, and it's a disgrace. Um, but if you're really good and really patient, yes, you can make it look as good as this thing, I guess. Um, but this thing was outstanding and really elegant and really well thought out, and it's just great.